Hi guys, it's Nancy and yesterday I posted on Facebook groups and Instagram um, a butterfly card that I made. I did give that uh, card away today, but you guys were so complimentary of it and everybody kept saying it's so cool. How do we make it? So we're going to make the card today. I will warn you this video is probably going to be kind of lengthy because this is a very involved card, but I think you'll find that it's worth it um, and it's just beautiful. So we are using... Um, from the ton the monarch butterfly stamp and die set so it's two different purchases the stamp is a very large set you get the the two butterfly wings you get the body of the butterfly and you get this little hello and then the die set comes with um, these large intricate dies and this is what's going to make our pop-up butterfly on the inside and then also um, the outline dies, which I have over here on the side. And then you have this little body piece, which we're not going to use today. But I wanted to show you what those are. And I will link these um, down below. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get a little messy here. We're going to start off with a piece of watercolor paper. And we have our um, watercolor paper cut down to... Uh, five by three and three quarters and we have the wing mounted so that it will be right off the edge of the card here and I'm going to be using the VersaFine Claire ink because this is a waterproof ink and the reason I'm using my mini misty today is because we're going to stamp this a couple times because the watercolor paper is textured and we want that to be nice and black so we're going to stamp it a few times What's nice about this new formulation of this um, VersaFine ink, this VersaClaire, is that it dries pretty quickly. So you have that nice waterproof effect without having to wait for it to dry or put any kind of heat embossing on it. If you wanted to heat emboss it, you could. You certainly don't have to. I think the one I did yesterday, I did put some um, Brutus Monroe Clear Icicle heat embossing on it. The one I did today, I'm just going to skip that step. If you guys wanted to, you could. Right, so I think that's pretty good. Maybe one more right here in the middle. There we go. All right, so that's nice and black. And I'm just going to take this out. And we will clean this up in a little bit. Okay. So now we're going to get our little inky box out. All right, so as you can see, I've been playing. And what we have is our little um, spray bottle. And you want to just spray a fine mist over the whole thing. If it makes you nervous, you can heat set your ink. Um, and then we're going to take our brushos. And I have some Brilliant Red, and I'm just going to put that in the corner. A little bit goes a long way, guys. This is orange. And it may not look like a lot's coming out, but there is. Yellow. because we can always add more. Lime green. And if you see your paper is starting to dry, you can spritz it again real quick. Uh, turquoise. Turquoise is not, the opening is not very large. And then we have purple. Ooh, a lot came out there. And then I also have some Az Alizarin Crimson, which I'm going to put up here in the corner with the red. Okay, and then all we're going to do is start spritzing away here. Let me move my brushes, brushes out of the way here. And you could use Color Burst or anything else that you have that would be pigments. And you're just going to dampen that until the colors magically appear and run all over your page and look nice and pretty. It's okay if it um, domes up a little bit. And if you feel like you need more color, go back in and put some more color in. Maybe not that much color, but a little bit more. Now you can leave it, that speckled look there. It's very artsy if you want to do that. Um, if you want to spray it out, you can spray it out.
And then you would take your heat gun and start to dry it. All right, so we're gonna pretend like I took the few minutes to dry that. I'm just gonna move this aside. I do have one already made up. And what I've done is once it's dried, I've just mounted it to a piece of five and a quarter by four um, black card stock. So this would be essentially the front of our card here. If you wanna stamp a sentiment on there, you could. The other thing that I did was I took a shimmer uh, marker and inside the wings, I just added some shimmer. All right, so then we would just glue that down. Okay, so that's the front of our card. We're just gonna, whoops, set that to dry. Okay, so the hard part now is the middle. So what you wanna do, and I've already done this off camera, is you're going to die cut the wings. So this is the detailed set of the wings. I've die cut this in black. And what I've done is I've put some adhesive on the back of the wings there. So you can see there's the adhesive, I die cut it. So we're going to use that. And then for the inner port or the outer portion of the wings, well, it would be the inner, but it's the outer die. You'll see what I mean. What I've done before I run this through my die cutting machine is I put a piece of plain paper between my cutting mats and my foil. And the reason I do that is because if there's any kind of mark on your cutting mats, it will transfer to your foil. So put a, just a plain piece of typing paper in there. So you can see there are my wings. These were cut with the outside layer, these dies that would cut out the wings here but they are also the inside layer of the detailed wings, if that makes sense. So you get both of these sets of dies come in this set. So you get all of this. And the little body. Okay, so those are our dies. So now comes the fun part, which is assembly. So yesterday when I did it, I did not have adhesive on the back of my wings, and so I had to use glue. So I would definitely recommend um, using some kind of either stick it or double-sided adhesive, and you wanna make sure you don't put any on this body part. And I'll tell you why in a second. So now we are just basically going to um, pop out all the pieces. I think the best way to do this would just be to pull the adhesive backing off. Yeah, no, that's not gonna work, okay. Is such strong super adhesive that all these little pieces are going to want to come out so So never mind the design you see on there. This was a piece of paper that I was using to test something out and I didn't want to waste the paper. So I'm reusing it. What I'm doing is just carefully pulling out all of those 
inner pieces of the wings because we don't need any of those. Carefully, carefully. Don't destroy the butterfly, Nance. Okay, now, the only thing I can recommend doing for these tiny, tiny little pieces on the end, because they are really stuck on here good with this, is to stick it down on your non-stick mat, press down the edges. Let me see, can you guys see what I'm doing here? And then just kind of take your tool and press down so those little pieces will stick down to the mat and come out of the butterfly wing. And because it's non-stick, you're not going to lose any of your stickiness on the main part of the, the wing there. There are a lot of little bits there. And this is the time cumbersome part because you want to make sure you get all those little tiny pieces out of there. I ripped this little guy's wing right here. We'll fix that in a second. So I think we got the majority of the bits out. Okay, then what we're going to do is line up our wing with the foiled part of the wing. So I have the sticky side up, the foil side is going to go down. I'm starting at the top of the wing here, lining it up to the body, pressing that down. So now the wing is stuck into place, and that little part there we'll just have to glue down. And if there are still any little pieces, you should be able to just pull them out. If you want, you can just burnish that down and make sure that that is all stuck into place. Believe me, this is a lot easier than what I had to do yesterday with gluing every little piece down. So the wing is stuck on, and again, there's no glue on the body, or there shouldn't be any stickiness on the body there. Okay, so now we're going to repeat for this side. And again, we are just going to remove, we can try pressing this down, see if that'll help. We want to try to remove as many of the big pieces as we can. And if you if you have a die cutting machine, um, you know, like a regular big kick or big shot or a cricket. Um, cuddle bug, sorry. You want to make sure that you have a shim because these are very intricate dies. I'm using the Gemini Junior and it cuts like butter. So it gets all the little pieces out no problem for me. Um, it's just because we have an adhesive backing on here that some of these bits are stuck on there. All right, so now I'm going to remove the adhesive. All 
And again, just going to take it over to my nonstick mat here, stick it down, and just kind of rub those little pieces out of there. Use my little pick to pick them out or stick them down. I probably could have put post-it tape on top of there and pulled those off too. Didn't think about that till just now. <laughs> Something you might want to try. Put a little masking tape or some low-tack tape on top and it would have pulled those pieces right out. Oh well, next video. <laughs> All right, I think I got the most most of them out. All right, so now we're gonna lift our little butterfly carefully. And we're gonna take the other wing and pop it down. You wanna make sure you have it all lined up before you pop it down there. Okay, so there we go. Now any excess that you have hanging off the edge there, you can cut off. Now I have little bits stuck all over me. Right, so now comes the fun part. So to get the um, the body to be popped up or 3D, there is a little slit at the bottom here. And you want to make sure that is cut open. And a slit at the top of his body here. So can you guys see that? So see the slit in the body right here? That and then this one, the slit is at the bottom. So all we're going to do is slide one into the other. Now, as tempting as it's going to be to put glue onto the bodies, to glue them together, do not put glue on the bodies because then the card will not close. When you go to close the butterfly, um, it'll be stuck in there. So now's the fun part. We're going to place the butterfly where we think we want it to go in the middle of our card here. And at this point is when you're going to need to put some adhesive on it. Now, I would recommend using a strong liquid glue so you have a little bit of time to reposition it. Um, I think a tape glue would be um, temporary eventually that that would pull off. So I like using Tombow um, multi-liquid glue, mono liquid glue. I'm still trying to pick off these things off my fingers. Okay. So, and then you want to practice kind of folding this over itself because that's what's going to happen when the card closes is the butterfly is going to fold over itself. So you have to see where you want the body. So we're just going to glue down one side for now. And you're going to put it right on this rectangular tab. Now at this point, I would try to line up the bodies so that when it does open, we have an idea that they're going to open up like that. 
And again, we're going to fold this wing over a little bit. And we're going to put a little glue under that tab. Okay, so this is what it should look like when it opens. And they should fold over each other, no problem, when we go to close the card. Because the body still move, it's just this tab part that stays still. Okay, okay so then you want to kind of just set that aside for a second to just kind of dry, put something heavy on it while you pick the little black pieces out of your fingernails for the rest of the night. Okay, so once that's done, I have two more pieces of paper cut down to five and a quarter by four. Um, they're not heavyweight, but they're midweight paper. And we are going to adhere these to the inside of the card because we want to we want to cover up those those little black tabs that are there. So we are going to just add some paper glue to this paper here. And all we're going to do is just cover up the tabs. So I'm going to butt this piece of paper up right up against his body, but I'm covering up those black tabs there. Again, covering up the tab. And if you have any adhesive, like I got a little bit there, you can take your embossing powder tool and just kind of rub that on there and it will take that stick off of there. Okay, so now you can stamp your sentiment on either side, but when you go to close the card, it will close on itself. So we have a beautiful butterfly on the outside. I'm just going to crease this down a little bit more here. And when you go to open it, you have this pop-up 3D butterfly. So that's how we make it. And again, you can embellish it, put some gems on there, some more glitter, uh, maybe stamp a flower behind the butterfly before you attach the butterfly. If you have a large flower, that would look cool. But I guarantee that anybody who receives this card is going to love it and the surprise they get when they open it up and they have this 3D butterfly inside. So again, all of these, um, the butterfly stamps and dies are from the ton stamps. I'll link them down below. If you're interested in the brushos, I'll link my Stampin' Up! page if you want to order those for me. There is a basic color six pack, which has the majority of the colors that I used. And if you have any questions, post them below. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and keep on stamping. Bye guys.